Sorry, so I took a break from uh, playing the event a little bit uh, because we wanted to uh, flex a little bit Clairvoyance EX and um, see what servants are incoming. You do! This is the reason why we're even going this far right now is because someone said that they had to save some stuff for people and I'm like, you need to understand that next year is going to be dumb because all these servants come month after month after month after month and it very little downtime and then when you take into consideration that NA has to speed up because their anniversary is a month before JP? It's gonna be fast. You're not gonna have time. So, let's go back into the other service that you get. I kinda wanna talk about King Protea next though. King Protea is the one that uh, is stupid and very good. She is, well, first of all, she's big as fuck. She's huge. Uh, people have kinda compared her to Tiamat because of her last form. Kinda looks like that. Uh, she's a big girl, pretty big. Also drawn by Wada, if it cares for it, has an S curve. Look at that star absorption of 100 and star gen of 10.2. Uh, MP charge attack could be better, but she has MP charge defense of 4%. Why does this matter? Most servants in the game only have 3%. So if you have 4%, that actually kind of goes a long way, in my opinion. Uh, she has a Buster Noble Phantasm and a Buster, a Double Buster Double Arts deck. Let's get into why she's good, if you guys don't know. First off, we start off with huge scale. Grant self endless proliferation buff for 10 turns. And what this is, at the, at the end of each turn, you give yourself a proliferation buff. And this increases old max HP permanently up to 10 stacks. And as you can see from the leveling, 2,000 to 3,000 per turn. It starts at 13,000 HP, and that continues to go up and up each turn. Granted, it starts off at a 12 cooldown, but if you max it out, it ends up being 10. So, you start this, 10, you get to do it again, you get to keep doing it. So it's kind of absurd. This gets buffed, by the way, later on, which is why I'm even talking about this, because it also grants an MP damage resistance buff, proliferation buff. So you get even more HP. It goes up to 4,000 HP. And on top of that, the damage resistance you get, you permanently get an 8% damage resistance that re increases on the stacks of 10. 80% MP damage resistance, and you keep increasing your HP by 4,000 at the end of every turn for 10 turns. What? <laughs> it's like, okay. So you're gonna live. It's gonna be really hard to kill you. Infantile regression C. Reduces own skill cooldown by one. Charges old MP gauge per proliferation stat. Five hundred percent chance to remove own prolif in the proliferation proliferation difference up whatever. So if you use this skill, it takes away all the stacks you have, but you can charge your noble phantasm and reduce your skill cooldown from 10 to 20 percent 20 percent per stack at max <laughs> okay third skill monster strength super simple right increases on attack for three turns 20 to 40 percent on five turn cooldown super simple look once again now she has five passives, one of them is a fluff passive. But four passives and they all add up to something. Buster performance, crit damage, arch performance, and increases her own damage by 250%. This is important because she's an arch buster servant. A buster noble phantasm. Look at this noble phantasm. If proliferation buff is present, further increase own buster performance 20% for one turn. So right off the bat, you get a 20% buster of and this activates first is AoE. And depending on your overcharge level, it increases own buster uh, performance again on top of that. So minimum 20 and again 20. So 40% buster up on top of the 11% buster up there 
on top of if you do monster strength as a 40% attack up. And then even her her freaking Bonzi. Increased on pro performance by 20%, increased on attack by 20% when proliferation status is active. And the only demerit is that it reduces party's quick performance by 10%. But she only has one quick card. And you're not putting her on a team with quicks. So it doesn't matter. It's Okay. Alright, cool. Good. Good to know. Good to know. Alright. Next one. We got Kama, ladies and gentlemen. Kama. The face that runs the place. The champ that runs the camp. Shout out to people who know those references. Kama is a Scotty staple. She's really good at what she does. Um, if you guys want me to show you her other forms, I can do that, but I'm gonna leave her off right here because this is what I saw her as, and I didn't really want to get her because of this. But whatever, that's me. Notice how she also has MP charge 4% as well. Uh, MP charge on attack is not that bad at 74% with a star absorption of 100. So she's an assassin, so remember that. She's gonna be pretty good at that. Four hits on her quick, she's a double quick, double buster, and four hits on her buster. First skill, reduces one ally's max HP by 1,000 per by 1,000 permanently. This is a demerit. Kinda sucks, right? Overcharges their noble phantasm by stage one. By one stage, but one time, three turns. Covers on HP. So essentially, she takes them to increase her own Noble Phantasm uh, stage or overcharge. Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good skill. We're doing alright. Um, this one, Grant Stealth. Get, get some Guts for one turn, increase on attack for three turns. The attack is 23%, so not bad, and it's a Guts skill. Not really happy that the Guts is there. Um, but... A thing to note, it says grant self gust status for one time. There's no time limit. There's no time limit. You can just have a guts and it's there for forever. If you don't die, you will just always have a guts. Like, you will always have a guts. So that's something to think about. Um pretty good. Isn't a six-turn cooldown as well? Third skill. Charges on Noble Van as engage, grants self self attack and advantage against Ultra Ego class for three turns. That's pretty niche, but still kind of good to know, in my opinion. Uh, deals two damage against them and then takes 0.5%. So she essentially gains advantage over Ultra Egos. Increases own critical damage by 20% for three turns and reduces all enemies' turn debuff resistance for one turn 20 to 40% and 50% battery to level this up. So, ignoring everything else, this is a 50% battery from her, with the added benefits if you're facing Alter Egos, which won't be that often, but if you are, she's going to be doing a lot more damage to them, increases her crit damage, and lowers charm resistance. Four passives. Starting to see a thing here, but there's one thing that's a little crazy. Independent manifestation. Crit damage by six, increase. Increases their own mental debuff resistance by 6, increases their own kill resistance by 6. A lot of things layered there on top of the quick performance, which you kind of really need to focus on. And of course, she has charm debuff and increases her own damage with her own version of divinity. Noble Phantasm. Deals damage to one enemy with an 80% chance to charm them for one turn. And increases own quick performance for 3 turns, activates first. This is quick, and it hits 10 times, so the percentage is, is a lot higher. So yeah, she's pretty good when you put her in uh, the freaking Scotty system. She's amazing. She's good. Her problem is her materials. At least to the center, you're going to need six of these mirrors. These mirrors are hard to get. Uh, so if you get them, save them for her specifically, because, uh, yeah, those mirrors are a bitch to farm. Otherwise, not that bad. She needs divine wine hearts and tears and you need a lot of those lamps but I think leveling up her skills are pretty easy considering I much rather have a harder time ascending than do the skills because the skills are already gonna cost a lot anyway so not bad uh, for those of you who might not be sold on comma and paper just know in the Scotty system she's absurd 
Let's talk about the steroid that most people are looking at. Arjuna Alt. <clears throat> Not only does he look sexy as crap, and I will, there's one thing, I said I wouldn't spoil stuff, but I just need you to look at stage four ascension and look at that. Look at that. That is beautiful. I can hang that up on my wall. The colors are beautiful. Arjuna altar is beautiful. All right, this is fantastic art. Sorry, I know that's not the main point of the thing, but I just had to talk about it because it's really good. So Arjuna Ultra's busted, right? Yeah, totally, 100%, 100% busted. MP charge is 5% on defense. Remember when I said a 3% is normal and 4 is really good? 5! So, yeah, there's that. MP charge, 98% for a Berserker. You, hmm, 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 hmm. Poor Berserker, pretty good, pretty good. Side note, lawful good and evil, so keep that in mind. Um, triple Buster, as a normal Berserker is, four hits on the Busters, two on the Arts, and four on Quick, with four on Extra, good hit counts. Let's start, Anti-Evil EX, increases own attack for three turns, and increases own damage against enemies with debuff for three turns. If they have debuffs, it increases the damage by a lot. 20 to 30% normally, 30% to 50%. So level 1, we're not dealing with 50% buff. But the thing is, because these are different, this is a special attack, which means it mul it, it's multiplicative. Which means you're doing more damage with this. This is really absurd. This is monstrous strength. Take it to a heightened level of absurdity. Now it's on a five-turn cooldown, so you only get two turns of uh, uh, downtime. So yeah, this is a really, a really good skill, and it stacks multiplicatively. So when you level it up to ten, that's thirty percent on top of another fifty percent, and that's three turns. Second skill, clairvoyance transcendental, transcendental. My goodness, the better clairvoyance than I could have. Buster Star Absorption, 3,000 to 6,000. He's getting these Buster, like, crit stars. And then charges his Noble Phantasm 20 to 30%. He has a better battery than his Archer self. Sorry. <laughs> Go back to the music. Um, so, yeah. Pretty good. Third skill. Oh, my God. It's called Lamplight. Ah, uh, okay. Lamplight of the Soul EX, it gives himself guts for one turn and recovers his own HP every turn for three turns. He has survivability. As a Berserker, this is very important. So, yeah, pretty good. He can live through some stuff now, which is actually pretty nice for him. But passive Buster and just passive damage. This dude is just passively hitting you harder. Noble Phantasm, anti-world, deals damage to all enemies. He reduces their buster resistance for three turns first. So unlike Ogita Alter, who has a very similar Noble Phantasm to this, a uh, higher hit count, but AoE, hers is after, this is before. That, again, stacks multiplicatively with the fact that he has all those buffs in the first skill I told you about. So, ugh, okay. Really good. What do you need to level up this dude? You need this thing. You need this egg. You need five of those eggs. Lisa send him. Uh -oh. uh, thank you so much for the follow. You need ten more. Giant rings and eggs. So you're gonna need 35 eggs. So when you get the chance to get those eggs, uh -oh. level that up. Spacious turn. The best Avenger in this game in my opinion. At least this year. I get Edmund Dantes is very good. Especially in the Scotty system. I get Jalter has the highest stat boost in the game. But there's no, apparently there's nothing better in this game than having Rin be the face of it. Because, let's just get into it. First one, increase on attack for three turns. 10 to 20%, not bad. Increases party attack surf for self is 20 to 30%. So automatically, if you level it up, you're giving your party more attack. 
and grants herself a charm debuff immunity for three turns. Okay, you can charm her, not bad. Second skill, Venus Driver. It increases her MP damage for one time or three turns. Grant self invisibility for one attack or three turns. Select's own Noble Phantasm command card between Quick, Arts, or Buster for three turns. For three turns. She can choose whatever she wants for her command cards for her Noble Phantasm. I need you to understand something. That means, absolutely, without a doubt, the best way to do this, to use this skill, is to absolutely have her use quick. Because it has the highest um it has the highest damage. By default, it's arts. But if you see if you switch to quick, it also switches the percentage of damage that you're doing. So it's like, why would you choose Buster when you can choose Quick? He has way more damage and have none of the downside. And for some random reason, it also increases his own damage and extra attack for 100% for one turn. And it also increases MP damage for three turns beforehand. And not to mention all these freaking things. She has six buffs. What? Six passive skills. All doing like all crazy crap. She has the charging her own MP, MP gauge 3.5 every turn. So she has literally the adventure passes on top of like her archer passes up here. <laughs> like, you got your independent action, you got your goddess essence, you got your magic resistance. Okay, cool. Then you have all the adventure buffs on top of that. And then we have her third skill, which is a 50% battery with an 80% chance to increase. Her quick arts and buster performance by 20% for three turns. Hmm. <laughs> yeah? So, yeah. She's so freaking versatile. So, yeah, if you didn't have Scotty but you have Merlin, you make her choose the Merlin one. If you didn't have Merlin but you have Tamamo or you had Nero, you can have her do arts like your normal one. But if you have a Scotty, you can put her in there and she actually will do work. It's absurd to me that they would give someone the ability to choose their command code for their Noble Phantasm. The only problem is she needs 10 of these cores, but all of these other things we have already. So get that. Um, she also needs stakes, bullets, and steel, and eggs. I cannot, in good faith, recommend that you roll for a Stafo unless you have a lot of synchronous. Because the big daddy of them all, Super Orion, literally is one of the last service that you can get at the end of the year. So all the servants I've told you about have been very good. Highlighted a lot of good ones, right? This servant breaks the game more than Merlin. And we are going to talk about why. Star Absorption is really high, again, for an archer. Very good. Triple Buster. Only one hit, mind you. Two hits, or sorry, three hits under Quick and Arts and five under Extra. First skill, increases the buster performance for one turn, 30 to 50%. Increases its own damage against beasts or demonic enemies for one turn. That's pretty good. That's multiplicative if they're beasts or demonic. Nice. Second skill, give themselves guts for one turn or three turns. Increases their own attack for three turns. That's 10 to 20%. And gain crit stars, 10 to 20%, or 10 to 20 of them. And the guts is pretty substantial. We get 3,000 HP, which is about almost fourth of his overall health. Six turn cooldown over here. Five turn cooldown. Third skill increases his own critical star absorption for three turns. Increases his own crit damage for one turn. Activates first when attacking with Buster cards for three attacks, three turns. 
This is very weirdly worded, but I'll tell you what this means. This means if you attack with a Buster card and you fail to crit, this increase in critical damage goes up for three times. For three turns. This activates every time. So it's they stack and they stack. So if you just suck and you can't crit, this thing will hit harder and eventually you will crit. It ignores invisibility for three turns, increase on attack for three turns, give yourself duff debuff immunity for three turns, they gain ten crit stars every turn for three turns. So also the overcharge is increasing in critical damage for three turns. You know, looking at this, you might think that he's very unimpressive, right? Looking at this, you might be like, oh, I don't see what the big deal with Super Orion is. I need you to understand that this person can loop their Noble Phantasm off of just Buster crits. I'm not lying to you. you. Know how Busters normally don't give you Noble Phantasms? That is not the case with Super Orion. He literally can loop with Buster crits. He literally can do a million damage off of one attack with Buster crits. I am not lying. I've seen it. It's stupid. It is basic. He with no Merlin by himself. He doesn't need Merlin. Merlin is a luxury. He is built in to do all of this himself. He can do it all. He Buster crits everything. He's stronger than the Berserker. He's insane. It doesn't make sense. But everything that he does, it all leads into it. Maybe it's the fact that he has a point ninety six MP charge on attack. I don't know, but he's Buster critting every time. Everything he has is for him to attack. I'm serious. If you don't believe me, you click up the videos. The thing is real. Super Ryan is stupid. He's one of the best servants in the game. You literally don't need anyone else. If you roll him, you win. You steamroll everything. Think Shang Tsung D is good? He can do all of that quicker because he can just say, "Hey, million damage." That's my TED talk.